Alright, here we go, no filler. Last week you heard my top 10 movies of last year. Now here's the top 10 movies I'm looking forward to this year. Number 10, Wreck-It Ralph. Most people haven't heard of this upcoming Disney feature directed by Simpsons and Futurama veteran Rich Moore yet, but the buzz sounds really good. It's Toy Story for video games. John C. Riley voices the title character, the villain of a Donkey Kong-style game from an arcade whose game characters come to life when the customers aren't around. Ralph is tired of being considered evil for doing exactly what he was programmed to do, so he ventures out into some of the other games looking for a fresh start. Not many other details are known, but it supposedly features lots of video game cameos, and some of the worlds Ralph visits are rumored to include parodies of Halo and Mario Kart, with Jane Lynch as the voice of a female version of Master Chief. Number 9, Iron Sky. From Finland, no, seriously, Finland, and the makers of the cult smash Star Wreck, comes a slick-looking sci-fi comedy that looks a lot like the underrated Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow, but with a much-needed dose of humor. What's it about? Space Nazis on the moon. How can you not want to see that? Space Nazis on the moon. Number 8, John Carter. Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Carter of Mars books are the DNA of damn near every sci-fi fantasy epic you've ever watched, read, played, whatever. But until recently, they've always been considered too big and too bizarre to actually film on their own. Pixar veteran Andrew Stanton makes his live-action debut in the director's chair, and despite posing budget and a reportedly troubled production, I'm still rooting for this one to work out. Number 7, Bray. One thing Pixar hasn't done yet, a movie with a female character is the lead hero. This year, that changes with Brave, a fantasy adventure story set in 10th century Scotland with Kelly MacDonald as a tomboy princess who'd rather be a warrior than a wife. The story proper supposedly has a big extra twist, but it's Pixar, so what else do you need to know? Number 6, Lincoln. Steven Spielberg finally steps up to make the historical drama he's been working towards for almost a decade now, the story of President Lincoln's decisive final months in office, based on Duris Kearns Goodwin's popular history book, Team of Rivals. The cast includes Sally Field, Jackie Earl Haley, Tommy Lee Jones, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, David Strathairn, James Spader, John Hawks, Tim Blake Nelson, Walter Goggins, and yes, Daniel Day-Lewis as Abraham f***ing Lincoln. How's that for prestige? Number 5, Prometheus. Between 1979 and 1982, Ridley Scott made two of the best science fiction films of all time, Alien and Blade Runner. Now, after 30 years, he returns to the genre for Prometheus, in which a group of scientists discover something horrifying while investigating alien ruins that could hold the secret to the origins of humankind. Scott doing sci-fi again is exciting enough, but here's the kicker. Prometheus is actually a prequel to Alien. No one knows exactly how much of a prequel, like if we'll see any xenomorphs, for example, but that's pretty damn interesting. Number 4, The Untitled Catherine Bigelow International Thriller, a.k.a. Kill Bin Laden. Shortly after completing The Hurt Locker, director Catherine Bigelow started work on another military film, a dramatization of the efforts by CIA, Army, and Navy SEAL teams to track down Osama Bin Laden, designed to be a kind of procedural drama about what was then seen as an ongoing, possibly stalled operation. But then we actually got the bastard, so now it gets to have a happy ending. Number 3, Django Unchained. How is Quentin Tarantino going to follow up making the ultimate Holocaust revenge movie with Inglorious Bastards? By making the ultimate slavery revenge movie with Django Unchained. Jamie Foxx plays an escaped slave in the pre-Civil War American South, who trains as a bounty hunter and seeks vengeance against white slave owners while hunting the evil plantation boss who kidnapped his wife. Christoph Waltz plays Django's mentor, Kerry Washington is the wife, Kurt Russell is an evil henchman, and Leonardo DiCaprio is the bad guy. According to early reviews of a leaked script, the basic idea is to depict some of the worst factually documented horrors inflicted upon slaves of the era by the white power structure, and then let Fox's avenging black hero brutally punish them for it. Yeah, that won't be controversial. Number 2, The Avengers. Five years ago, Marvel Comics started their own movie company and set out on an insane-sounding experiment to make the most uncompromising superhero adaptations ever. Not only bringing their characters to the big screen, but also for the first time bringing the comics genre-crossing shared universe continuity system with them. Now, after four pretty good movies and one really, really good movie, Marvel Films and writer-director Joss Whedon are poised to deliver what could well be the biggest comic book superhero movie of all time. The actual storyline has been kept tightly under wraps so far, and there's still no telling if Marvel's Gambit will actually work. But if it does, this could be the film that changes the way Hollywood approaches comic books forever. Number 1. The Hobbit. And really, what else could it be? A decade after delivering what I'd still consider the single greatest work of epic fantasy ever filmed, and cementing the 21st century nerd domination of Hollywood, Peter Jackson returns to the Shire for the first film in a two-part adaptation of J.R. Tolkien's original Middle-Earth adventure. Martin Freeman is Bilbo Baggins, Sir Ian McKellen is back as Gandalf the Grey, and the New Zealand tourism industry is going to need a bigger money bin. I don't know about you, but I couldn't be more excited to go back to Middle-Earth if Middle-Earth was a real place.
Well, gang, that's what I'm looking forward to this year. Here's to hoping all of these movies get finished, get released, and don't suck. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. <laughs> what? Why, is something the matter? Ah, I see. You want to know why the Batman movie isn't on the list. Well, it's because this is a most anticipated list, and frankly, I'm not all that excited about it. Now, don't go into a big crybaby hissy fit about it. I don't think it's going to be bad. It's a Christopher Nolan Batman movie, so you can pretty much count on it being at least pretty good. But I'm sorry, I just can't muster up much genuine anticipation this time. Much as I loved The Dark Knight, there's just nothing about this so far to get me as jazzed up as the Joker did. I mean, Catwoman looks boring, Christian Bale's Batman will probably continue to be the least interesting thing about his own movies, and Bane somehow seems like an even worse character here than he was in the comics. I'm sorry, I just can't psych myself up for Batman's supposed ultimate challenge being some bald asthmatic guy in a parka. Look, I hope I'm wrong, but right now it's feeling an awful lot like the underwhelming third movie curse is about to claim another victim. Just my opinion, okay? We'll all find out in about six months, so chill.